Outbrain is one of the most important tools if you want to be successful. It is the one responsible for how we think, how we plan for the next day, how we handle stress, or how much we can persevere when faced with a difficult situation. But oftentimes, we take for granted how we should take care of our brain, keep it optimized, and working at full potential. When our brain has been worked up so much, you may notice you aren't as sharp as you used to be. And sometimes, it's just the lack of inner workings of our brain. There are many ways we can make improvements by doing simple habits that will make your brain healthier. In this video, I'm going to go over seven simple habits to keep your brain optimized as you work. Hi, I'm Munif Ali. I'm here to help you achieve your goals and your financial dreams. And your success journey begins with your brain. So let's get it started. There's a saying that you are what you eat. For my first tip, if you want to get rich, wealthy, successful, or if you just want to be the most productive version of yourself, you have to eat foods that are healthy for your brain and your body. Eating food that is specifically good for the brain improves your cognitive abilities. For example, if you eat foods that are rich in omega-3 fats, it actually improves the brain's longevity and avoids brain diseases. But if you keep eating junk food, the opposite happens and it increases your chances of getting a brain disease later in life. And junk food actually slows down your cognitive thinking abilities, which is why you feel groggy after that fast food hamburger. Think of your brain as an engine to a premium car. If you want the best performance out of your prized vehicle, your Ferrari, or your Maserati, or your Mercedes, you need to load it with premium fuel. And if you don't, it won't work to its fullest potential. It'll be lackluster in its performance. And the same goes with your brain. If you don't feed it healthy brain food, you won't see the full potential of yourself. So try your best to eat healthy brain foods like eggs and nuts and blueberries, avocados and broccoli. It doesn't matter what tribe you pick as far as the eating habits, just make sure you're eating whole foods that are rich with healthy fats. Aside from the physical cleansing that you do with nutrition, if you want to get rid of the toxins in your body, you also need to cleanse it mentally. And this is often neglected because it's not commonly discussed. According to scientific studies, 90% of our thoughts are negative about ourselves. It's the I'm my worst critic mindset that is often affecting our own performance at work. Look, I am a strong believer in accountability, but you have to give yourself a break from time to time and learn to think optimistically. That doesn't mean you don't think realistically, but optimistically is important. Studies show that when we start to think negatively, it also increases our chances of getting health problems down the line like Alzheimer's disease. If you rewire your brain to think optimistically, the improvements are drastically different. Not only will you live longer, but your mind will be a lot sharper. So meditate, get into doing affirmations. When you start to think negatively, snap your finger and say cancel thought. These are all things that work for me in stopping negative behavior and negative thinking. So as soon as possible, you have to find the solutions to your problems. You can start by being the best friend to yourself and talk to yourself. And meditation is one of the easiest ways to break negative thinking and break any patterns of thoughts that you have. You can also take notes when you start to think negatively, write it down and think of the ways to change some of your toxic habit. Because if you let yourself stuck in this this type of negative behavior, it's going to be harder for you to improve as an individual. I do a lot of meditation and a lot of journaling as well, sometimes before and sometimes after meditation, but my first ritual of the day is always to get up and meditate. Clear my brain, clear my thoughts, and sit still in nothingness for a little bit in the present moment. And start with little increments, and soon enough, you'll start to sit there for longer and longer. Third is exercise. If you want to improve your brain's functionality, you need exercise regularly. And when you work out, your heart rate increases and pumps more oxygen to the whole body, that includes the brain. Our brain then releases hormones that promote growth and longevity to our brain cells. And so far, the more beneficial exercises are cardio exercises since it gets our brain the flow of blood that it needs. The faster your heart beats, the more oxygen you're getting. But aside from lifting heavy weights, go and find exercises that really make you sweat. I've been running for years and especially early in the morning and one of the first things that I do to help set my day is to go out for a brisk walk or a little bit of a run. You don't have to run a marathon, but just get in the habit of movement and movement is exercise a lot of people feel like exercise can only happen in a given place like a gym or a class and you need this equipment and that equipment but all you need to do is rev up that heartbeat and get it up to a level where you can hold a comfortable conversation and you do that at least a half an hour every few days and you'll see a huge boost in your overall performance mood sleep and even stress and don't miss out on exercising if you want to improve not only your brain's health but your overall health and well-being as well 
including your mood. The fourth habit to improve your brain's functionality is by simply cleansing and cleaning your environment. Aside from keeping your brain physically and mentally healthy, cleaning up your environment is an underrated way to improve your brain. According to studies, our brain is much more relaxed when we see an environment that is clean and organized, helping us perform better and focus better and be less stressed. Scientists call this the theta brainwave state, when our brain becomes clear and focused solely on the task at hand. You might have those moments when you're just really focused on something or when you get inspired to have a sudden creative idea when you're completely relaxed, like having afternoon coffee or tea or being in the shower. Not only will this help your brain creativity, but it also improves our memory as well. You probably recognize this too. When our work desk or room or whatever is in front of us is messy, it's hard to focus and concentrate and ruins our mood. It becomes harder for you to become more productive because your brain could easily be distracted by the mess on the desk or the table or in your room. So start cleaning up whether you're at home or in the office. Your mind will thank you with greater productivity just with a bit of cleaning. When I'm really working on a project, I like to completely put everything on my desk in a box and I'll take it out afterwards when I'm done and so yeah that means sometimes I have to reorganize but there's nothing else on my desk maybe except for this little plant here but you get into the habit of extreme focus now think of it if you're going into uh, perform a surgery you're not gonna have a whole bunch of clutter around only the tools you need and the patient right and that's why doctors perform at the very best without distraction all of these things are made to make us as human beings focus on the task at hand and we hear this all the time if you want to improve your performance in everything that you do. You need to have enough sleep. That is the fifth habit that I want you to work on and take care of is your sleep. Now, I used to think that sleep is for the weak and how I was trained in the military, you know, you don't need sleep. And I was even at a point where I was like, why even sleep for goodness sake? It's a complete waste of time. And as I've gotten older, I recognize that I'm not optimal and I don't think clearly when I lack sleep. All I did in the beginning years was work all the time. But the science shows otherwise because when we sleep, our brains actually become more active and act like a reset mechanism that removes toxins, which again, lessens the chances of brain diseases later on. Now I've really worked at going into a digital sunset and not having you know, extra lights around. I've really tried to master the way I sleep so that I can function at my greatest level. Don't let sleep be a second thought. Go into this really planning out your sleep. It's important that you understand that part of sleeping is actually dreaming as well. And when we dream, our creative side of our brain becomes more active. And it's a great source of inspiration sometimes. And whatever you're trying to learn the day, the brain is actually trying to recall that in the dreams. And that's why experts recommend sleeping instead of doing all-nighters when you're studying or learning a skill because your brain actually dreams. And in this hyper state, it helps you memorize stuff. And you can also find solutions. I've gone to sleep many times thinking about something and actually saying to myself, I want to find a solution and waking up with one. So calm down from those all-nighters and get some Z's and your brain will thank you later as well. So try this as a little tip. Whatever problem you have, say, I want to find a solution, meditate and then go to sleep and see what your brain actually works on. Or you can try another one and tell yourself what time you want to wake up and you'll be shocked. You will wake up at that time because your brain actually turns on and knows what time it is. The sixth habit that I want you guys to think about is continuing to learn new things. Your brain actually uh, functions better when you're studying and finding different things to learn. Our lives aren't over when we graduate from high school or college or when we have achieved our goals. If you want to improve, strive to learn new things and maintain our cognitive skills. Uh, if a person stops practicing for a long time, like let's say a boxer, you get something called ring rust. To optimize your brain to always work out, you can't let your mind go stagnant because there's no growth. Keep studying, keep reading, um, keep looking for things that interest you. Keep your brain sharp and it'll improve its longevity. This doesn't just stop with reading books. Try to learn a musical instrument or a new workout or you know even art. Try things that are different because life is rich and full of different variety. There are plenty of ways to learn new things and you can go online, you can take courses, you can do so many things and it will also teach you to be the best version of yourself. Uh, just a quick break, I'm giving away a free book to help you on your journey to financial freedom. If you sign up using the link down below, you'll be able to get that book downloaded really quick. If you want more technical strategies on how to improve your financial health, you can also join me on my podcast. All the descriptions are in the link down below. 
The seventh habit you should learn is to keep your brain healthy by managing your stress levels. We all get stressed out and it's just a part of our lives. But if you're under stress for too long, then it could be bad for your brain and your body's health. And when a brain is stuck for long periods of stress, it might rewire itself to focus on the amygdala or our fight or flight response part of the brain. So what's happening is our brain keeps focusing on the part where if you feel threatened, it's going to forego all the other productivity issues to get you to safety. So that imbalance is actually affecting the inside of your head. Your brain is telling you you have to survive, whether it's deadlines or stress at work. If there's an imbalance, the other parts won't function as they should. But think about it, if you are in danger, of being eaten or in danger of being pursued by some animal, you would not be thinking about where's my iPhone and what time do I have to be at a meeting and oh my God, I'm going to my in-laws tonight. The only thing you would do is try to survive. And that's when that survival instinct kicks in. Under stress, if your brain is constantly thinking about that, you lose focus and you're only thinking about that one thing that is stressing you out even more. So if you wanna improve, manage stress. You can practice meditation and journaling like I've spoken about before. You can also, if your environment produces a lot of stress, think creatively on how you can lessen that. In turn, it'll help you refocus attention on your goals. Or go on a short break or a vacation or a walk or anything else. For me, when my stress levels get high, I tend to go for a walk or leave the house or go for a drive somewhere where my mind goes away or I'm even notorious for grabbing a movie just to think about something else. So if you could, take a little bit of time and find out what your triggers for stress are. For me, sometimes it's expectations or managing people. And if those issues come up for me, then I know I need to take a little bit of a break. And so learn where your reset button is and quickly just say, hey, you know, I'm getting upset at this person or I'm getting upset in this situation. Let me take a break. Those are my seven millionaire habits to optimize brain functionality. These are all simple things that you can do and try and apply as early as right now. And you can see a better version of yourself right away. Another habit that I encourage you to do is to please like and subscribe this particular channel if you enjoyed watching this video. Share it with people who might find this useful. Thanks again for watching. And if you wanna learn more about success habits and getting wealthy, this is how I increased my net worth and became a millionaire in my early 20s. And you can do it as well.